We love to celebrate exceptionally skilled performers such as athletes and musicians, but sometimes even those at the top of their craft have a bad day. And sometimes it seems like one small thing leads to worse and worse performance. What's the psychology behind choking under pressure? Stay tuned. Growing up, my mom was a pianist and piano teacher, so most of my early life I was steeped in proper form and technique for playing the piano. One day, years later, I was walking down the hallway and I passed a colleague at her computer, and I saw the way she was sitting up very straight, feet in a very distinctive position, wrists elevated just so above her keyboard, and I knew she was a piano player. Now, I'd known this person for years, and she never said anything about it, but I said, hey, you play the piano. Now, her face fell, and she went white as a ghost, and I could tell she was totally shaken by my discovery of her secret. Yes, I used to play piano, she stammered. Used to? Why don't you play anymore? And she then recounted her story. In high school, she was on track to become a serious concert pianist. She had worked for years and years developing and honing and perfecting her musical chops and was just beginning to pursue a career in music when it happened. One evening, she had a concert, which of course she had done before, but this time was different. She was introduced and the crowd clapped and she took her place at the piano. But the instant she sat down, everything she had ever known about the piano slipped out of her mind leaving her with only blankness. A second passed and it felt like an eternity. Two seconds passed, then three. From the audience, someone coughed, still nothing. By this time, she knew it was obvious to everyone that she was having some kind of problem, which did nothing to help jog her memory. As the lights bore down on her, more and more pressure mounted and she remained frozen. Finally, she realized that the painful gaze of a thousand eyes watching her failure was too much. She got up from the piano and walked off stage. She never played the piano in public again. Now, at this point, I felt kind of bad for asking, but I reassured her that her secret was safe with me and I'd never tell another living soul. Uh-oh. Believe it or not, the phenomenon of choking under pressure is surprisingly common, especially among those who are at the height of performance. Whether it be Olympic figure skater Tanya Harding melting down during her free skate, or Ariana Grande forgetting the words to her own songs, it's almost like those we expect to perform the best can be most at risk for choking when things go wrong. Once it starts, the more they try to force it, the more performance is disrupted. So what's going on here? Well, psychological science to the rescue. So let me give you some of the best explanations we found so far and a brief review of some of the evidence for these explanations. The first thing we should talk about is when choking is likely to happen. One type of situation that seems especially likely to generate poor performance and anxiety under pressure involves three ingredients. The first is the task is interpersonal. That is, you're being observed by another or others. The second is that that other person or people are likely to evaluate your performance in some way, noticing whether you are performing good, bad, and so on. Now, the third ingredient is that there are likely to be consequences resulting from that judgment. Consequences could be internal, such as shame or embarrassment, or they could be external, such as loss of income from losing gigs or something like that. Researchers have pointed out that three domains in particular seem to fit this model. Performance anxiety during sex, sports, and on the stage. All three of these involve the potential for others to judge your performance and have future consequences. As such, researchers have explored all three types of these behaviors to try and understand how to help reduce the risk of choking under pressure. There are two major types of theories that are most commonly used to explain choking under pressure. The first I'll call distraction theories. It's well established that dividing your attention between two tasks makes performance on both tasks go down, which is why they say you shouldn't half-ass two things, you should whole-ass one thing. Is that how that goes? According to distraction theories, the pressure of being observed creates distractions. Distractions from the audience, distractions from your own intrusive thoughts about how well or how poorly you are performing, 
and worries about what will happen if you fail, and all that extra cognitive effort that's being pulled away from the task at hand is what causes the impairment in performance. Now the second type of theory I'll call explicit monitoring theories. According to this explanation, practicing a skill makes it become more and more automatic, requiring less conscious thinking to accomplish. This type of memory is called procedural memory, or you may know it as muscle memory. Driving a stick shift, for example, requires a lot of thinking to master in the beginning. You've got to push the clutch, shift to the right location of the next gear up, slowly release the clutch, and so on. But once you've got it down, pretty soon you're doing it while swapping CDs and eating tacos without even really noticing that you've shifted gears. Which hand do you use first when you go to tie your shoes? I bet most people couldn't tell you without reaching down to try. That's no longer part of your conscious awareness. This is sometimes called expertise-induced amnesia, where you can no longer remember how you did a task once you're sufficiently well-trained. But here's the problem. Once you have a skill like this, perhaps thinking about the steps can actually interfere with the performance of the automatic skill. Try explaining a proceduralized skill to someone else and see if you don't get it wrong or have more trouble than you normally would. By paying attention to the skill and its step-by-step -step execution, you might actually cause performance to go down. An example of this type of theory is called the Reflective Impulsive Model, or RIM. According to RIM, an evolutionarily ancient cognitive system is designed to monitor your perceptions and respond appropriately with very little cognitive effort, resulting in streamlined performance. That's what we call the impulsive system. Now, the reflective system is more recent and allows for thinking and conscious awareness, but those efforts are limited by the capacity of working memory. Now, you're well aware of the limits of working memory if you've ever tried to remember a phone number for any period of time. You kind of have to rehearse it in your mind over and over and over again, otherwise it just disappears. Therefore, the reflective system requires much more effort and can inhibit or hinder performance of the automatic task. If you're driving and suddenly a road hazard appears, you need to be able to stop the automatic processes and let your cognitive systems take over and help you for a little bit. At this point, you may slow down, interrupt the conversation you're having, uh, turn off the radio to reduce your cognitive load. And for God's sake, put down the taco. Usually, these two systems work together to help optimize performance, using the impulsive system most of the time for better performance, but bringing in the reflective system when it's needed for special situations that the impulsive system isn't ready for. But if that reflective system gets engaged when you don't want it to, for instance, when you feel you're being judged, then performance on that automatic task is likely to go down. So which kind of theory is right? Well, both distraction and implicit monitoring theories might be true in different situations. One study of expert and novice golfers showed that expert golfers had less access to memories of how they made a specific putt, despite knowing more about how to putt in general. That is, they showed expertise-induced amnesia, suggesting that they had proceduralized the golf putting skill. Not surprising. But then they also looked at choking under pressure in two different types of tasks. In one task, they had their participants complete 270 golf putts from different distances for practice. Then in one group, they told the participants that they could win some extra money if they improved their performance by 20% in the next 18 putts. And that, by the way, they had a partner that had already done this. So winning the money depended on them improving. So this created a high pressure situation ripe for choking. In fact, they did see a decrease in performance compared to low pressure putts, indicating that some degree of choking under pressure had occurred. In comparison, they had participants complete a different type of task in which participants solved simple alphabet math problems like A plus two equals C, because C is two letters after A. After some practice, they were placed in a high or low pressure situation, like in the golf task, but in this task, they showed no evidence of choking under pressure. Their data also showed that this type of task does not become as proceduralized as golf putting does or other sensory motor skills. Therefore, the data from this study are consistent with explicit monitoring theories, and overthinking performance of an automatic task is likely to lead to choking. 
Finally, I'll mention that not all situations involving interpersonal evaluation and consequences seem to produce choking. For example, a recent analysis of the scores of professional darts players showed no discernible effects of choking under pressure, nor enhancement of performance in a social situation. Now this is true despite dart throwing to be one of those proceduralized skills, much like golf putting. Now to me, this is hopeful because figuring out what is so special about darts in particular may hold a key to understanding performance problems in other arenas. Now I have a task for you, and I don't want you to overthink it and risk choking under pressure. How fast can you hit the like button? <laughs> Consider subscribing to get more videos on all things psychology, and until next time, keep thinking. And by the way, don't taco and drive. We need to make more videos like this one. <laughs> <laughs>